China cracks Torrent VPN, IRS ad security, cyber espionage, nightmare, OPM breach. We got a timeline, all that and more coming up on ThreatWire. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for June 15th, 2015. It's your personal summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Well, actually, it's not really personal. It's for everybody out there. And while we're talking about things being out there, I'm going to pull a quote for you right here. Quote, the best option then could be to get sensitive data off the internet entirely. Whoa, that one comes from Cyber Espionage Nightmare. Look at the case the U.S. has built against agents of China's People's Liberation Army Unit 61398. They became famous for hacking into networks at American companies like U.S. Steel, Alcoa, Allegheny Technologies, uh, Westinghouse, not to mention United Steel Workers, which represents uh, 1.2 million people at this point. Um, you know, working in retired steel workers. That's a lot of information there. It's doubtful that any of the agents named in the indictment will ever be extradited, much less come to trial uh, in the U.S. or anywhere else, uh, though the FBI most wanted posters are always a nice touch. It is pretty clear, though, that it is getting harder to keep secrets secret if they're online or accessible to machines online. Or as the article quotes Virgil Gligor of Carnegie Mellon University Scilab, quote, we made access to services and databases and connectivity so convenient that it is also convenient for our adversaries. It's kind of deep, isn't it? The article discusses the spear phishing techniques used to deliver the malware that tapped into U.S. Steel's networks. That allowed, uh, for example, Chinese negotiators to secure business strategies, pricing, and quite a bit more um, uh, around the time. Uh, similar breaks uh, took place at Westinghouse, ATI, and Alcoa Systems, and they all happened when they were in negotiation with Chinese vendors, uh, Chinese workers, Chinese businesses, or fighting over tariffs with the government of China. And before you decide that the IT folks of these companies uh, must be idiots, go read the article, learn a bit more about how layers of security on email and web servers and AV tools and desktops were just circumvented by uh, a little spear phishing, some hot points, and some modestly sophisticated management by hackers. Look, a high quality air gap between your business data and the internet might be a good idea. It also makes getting access to that data and sharing it an incredible pain in the ass. Links are in the show notes, and as always, comment down below. Speaking of sensitive data getting stolen, Krebs on Security has a great summary of the breach at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, a.k.a. the HR team for the federal government. At this stage, the OPM story includes attacks on the OPM computer networks, uh, USIS, which provided background checks for Homeland Security, Keypoint, which took over the background checks from USIS, Anthem Health ins Insurance, Primera, and Care First Blue Cross. Um, what's frustrating, what really ticks me off for the huge group of people impacted by this collection of hacks and breaches is that a lot of it could have been prevented or at least made significantly harder with better security practices. Speaking of which, if you're impacted by this or if, say, you're alive and have concerns about identity theft here in the U.S., go get a security freeze. We've got links to Krebs advice on them in the show notes. I use one myself and highly recommend them. Krebs also links to an excellent write-up on ArsTechnica.com which points out uh, some of the issues in OPM security practices. Matter of fact, until 2013, it says, the agency had no internal IT staff with professional IT security experience and certifications, not to mention issues with a lack of multi-factor authentication, a mess of poorly managed networks, uh, many of which were administrated by outside contractors. Go check out Why the Biggest Government Hack Ever. It's a great read. All right, maybe it's just a little depressing. Meanwhile, in more cheerful news, after tens of thousands of taxpayers had their IRS refunds stolen, the IRS will, quote, require a more rigorous authentication process before releasing information and refunds and to broaden efforts to pinpoint patterns of fraud, end quote, says Patricia Cohen in the New York Times. You can expect these new features, the security stuff in place for the 2016 tax season. The article goes on to quote IRS Commissioner John Koskinen, quote, for the first time, everyone in the software industry will share aggregated details about their filings to help us all identify fraud. Not so good is the news also in the New York Times, this time by Nicole Perloff, that the state censors in China are inside VPNs and Tor, privacy tools which in theory should mask your online activities, especially when you duck through the Great Firewall. The article reports that if users were logged into any of, quote, 15 Chinese internet portals, including those run by Baidu, Alibaba, and Renren, the hackers were able to steal names, addresses, sex, birth dates, email addresses, phone numbers, and even the so-called internet cookies that track other websites views by a user, and quote, and derp. Of course, the code that made this possible, beyond the unpatched uh, JSNOP vulnerability on the servers of those 15 portals, why are things not secured? Uh, the, the code that was uh, actually made this possible was injected into people's machines via web browsers in a watering hole attack. So let's just stop using the internet and web browsers and just 
Go back to email, which is also easy to censor in China. Right, before I go home and stop using the internet or just start banging my head against the table right here, I need to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from this show and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. I really hope you'll contribute. That'll help keep us coming completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, and subscribe goes a long way too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet, assuming I just don't quit using it.